Corner halfback joint. This is a great joint for starting out. Hi, I'm Conrad. Today I'm going to be taking you through a tutorial, a step-by-step -step guide on how to create this, ha this corner half-lap joint. In great detail, we're going to go over um, everything that you need to know. And if you can manage to put together this joint, then you're set up for all the other joints that's going forward. Right, let's get going. I've got a length of timber here that we're going to use for our corner half lap. This is been planed all the way around, so we buy the timber like this, and it's 44 mil or 45 mil, sometimes 44, 45 by 33 mil. It can be any size, and um, we're going to mark this up with our face and side edge. Choosing our face and edge markings is pretty important and very helpful. But marking, marking it up and make sure we actually have a face side and an edge side marked up is absolutely essential to when we measure out later. So the things we're looking for is if I run my fingers on this, I can feel that this side of the timber feels fairly smooth. Across here, it's a little rougher. And on the back, it's quite smooth as well. So I'm looking to see the smoothest edge. That'll be part of it. Another element that I could be looking for would be the timber is actually square. And that we've got a nice square edge on that. On this one, because it's planed and out of the factory, it's square all the way around, at least where I've measured it. But it's not always the case. The other thing we're looking for are knots. So if we want to, for a number of reasons, if we were going to have a joint here or we were cutting this area, we might want to avoid a knot like that. Or if it was for this uh, display, you might want to display a knot on some things to give it an authentic look. Other times you want to avoid them. So if this is going to be holding something up, I'll put it there. If this was going to be holding something up and you don't want the knots showing in it, choose a bit that doesn't have it. Marking it up. There are symbols for this. So that is the face. So I'll write it. And that is our face side. And this one is our edge side. If you can only see the edge side, it actually points towards our face. And if you can only see the face, it points towards the edge. But because we're going to cut this piece up a couple of times, I'm going to mark this on here a number of times. We only need two short lengths for this. So I'll take my tape measure and mark that on 220 mil. I'm going to put a little X. To the side of that, we're going to take the combination square and put my pencil on my 220 mil mark. I'm going to put the body of the combination square up against my edge. Now it should always be either on the face or the edge side. So on this one, it's going to be on our edge side, and we're going to do a line down on that one. We can flip it up here, flip it up. And we'll match up that line across to there. Now, as we turn it over, our edge side is over here. So the body must be on that edge side. And we'll continue to line that up through there. Flip it again. And this side, when we look on both sides of our ruler here, I'm able to see the line on both sides. And we'll run that through there. So we have a line all the way around our timber that we can cut on. Put a tenon saw. This tenon saw is easily available from screw fix and the likes. So our tenon saw is a straight edge, but on the top of it, We've got a metal strip on the top here, and that keeps it rigid. We're going to make a cross cut, and we're going to cut on the waist side of this line. 
this is the piece of timber that we want to keep here. This is our waste. I'm using a bench hook here on top of my bench. So if I cut down onto this, I'm not going to cut the bench, but I will cut the bench hook, which I don't mind cutting into. And I prefer to cut into that because I'm not going to put my timber over the bench hook and cut here. Because if there's any fibers that are getting broken off at the end, they'll splay out and break. So it's better to break it over the bench hook. We'll finish that one off. And there we go. If we can put that timber upright and that timber stands straight up like that, we've got a pretty straight cut. But we're going to check it a bit closer and see that that's okay. If we take a closer look at it, we can still see our line. There's a fraction of that line left all the way around. That's fine. That's what we're looking to do. In closer inspection, if you really want to get right up to it, we'll take our combination square, put it up to that, and see if we can see any gaps between there. Now, if we've got a bit of line or uh, we can see through it, we're a little off. But really, if it's within about a mil, that's okay. We can tidy it up afterwards. So I'm happy with that. We're good. Let's cut our second piece. Now we have our two pieces. We're going to label them up. So on our pieces, I want my faces facing up and my edges in. I'm going to set it up like this here in this corner. So I'm going to call this one our right. And we label that one. And we label this one our left. And that's it. Put your name on it as well. Because if you're do studying this and you're in a workshop, you're going to mix this up with a whole lot of other people. That tends to happen to me or my students. So let's avoid that. Put my name on it. Next step, we're going to measure where we're going to put our next cuts. And that's the width of the timber. So this one's going to go on top. I want to keep that on top. So I'm going to start to mark off the waste that's going to get cut away. So if this bottom bit gets cut away, this top bit will stay. If that top bit stays, then the top bit of this goes. And how far down are we to go? We're going to measure the width of that timber. Now, I'm going to leave a small bit of an overhang by about five mil, because we can plane that off afterwards and get it nice and tidy. So let's put this on here and get it squared. Let's use a combination square to have that one. So we've got a slight overhang on the back of it, and we've got a slight overhang on that side of it as well. So at that stage, we can mark that now and we just need a small pencil mark on that one and we'll put a little mark on the other one but let's square that up to that side and put a pencil mark on that square these lines all the way around there's our edge that's on that one there's our face that one out. Now we don't have to mark it the whole way because we're not actually going to be cutting that piece. So this has got to go off that face. We've got to measure up to that one. And we've got it. It's easier when we put it down on the bench. I'm trying to hold it up to the camera for you. All right, so we have that one. That's how far down we're going with this. Let's remember to put that in the right place. That's the right one. Let's turn that so the body's on our edge, Mark that over, a little more than halfway for that side, and a little more than halfway for that side. 
Next, we want to measure how deep we're going to cut this. That's got to be the same depth on both sides. So we're going to make use of this. This is my combination marking gauge. It's a combination because it does a combination of jobs. It's got three pins in it. One pin, two pins on the other side. So check out the other video on combination marking gauges. Let's find the halfway mark. We're going to put this in our clamp. And we know the timber's 33. So a couple of ways of doing it. We're going to eyeball that and see, is that halfway? Lock it up, put it on a bit of waste, put it in there. When we make a small indentation, take our combination marking gauge. Go to the other side and see if we get that pin in the same hole. If not, it's got to be adjusted a little bit more. So let's get that a little over that direction. Tighten that. Put in a hole. And another one. That's pretty damn accurate. That's quite accurate. I'm happy with that. Now, when we mark this up, we have to mark them off our face. So if there's any inconsistency in the wood or any other part or our, our measurements, that inconsistency will be the same distance from the face of both of these to our line. So tighten it up a little bit more. I'll put a mark in at the end of where I want this, this pin to stop. I'm uh, making sure that my block on the combination marking gauge is tight up against the face side here. So when I run that down, the pin will follow through. I'm going to turn it over and put a mark where we want it to stop close to it and run that down to that one. When we've done that, get your pencil, run your pencil in there for a bit of a clearer line. We'll do this the same on the end grain. Gonna run it through a few times. Take your pencil, mark that round, and mark this one as well. So we've got our line come through. At this stage, let's hash out a waste. We've already been identifying a waste, but we want to be clear. That's one done. We have our timbers marked out. We're going to measure twice and cut once. We'll double check this. And when we look, we've got two pieces that are waist up here, but they're not laid out correctly. So now we've got our right and our left and our face is up and our edge is in. And we can see that's going. This will go over it. And this bit will go. And we'll go in there. So we've double checked. Let's get cutting. Cutting our first piece out. We're going to put it in the vise and we're going to keep it straight up. Easier to see from that angle how we've put this in first. We're going to cut on the waist side of the line and we're going to get it as close as we can to that line, but we don't, we want to still leave some of that line. So we do want to get quite close to that. But if you cut a little less off, you can always take a bit more off later. If you cut too much off, you won't be able to add it back on. So allow yourself a little extra and clean it up with a chisel afterwards. But on the top of this, we're gonna put a small line across the top of that end grain. Put it out of the way. And that's gonna get us started. With our end line, marked with the saw a little. Now we're going to turn this at an angle. And now at this stage we can see, at this stage we can see both of these lines across here. And we're going to cut down along this one to create a kerf on this side. 
Cut down to our line. We're going to turn that timber round, keeping it at an angle, and we're going to cut down a kerf. A kerf is the piece that's cut out. We're going to cut down on this edge. When you have your two saw cuts down both of these sides, we can straighten this back up. And we'll be able to cut now straight down. And the blade should stay within that line. We'll do it this way that you can see it. So that we don't have to keep looking around and checking that line. As you've cut down these lines, if you're not that confident on it yet and you want something to stop you when you get to that edge, just put extra pieces of timber in there, a couple of pieces of scrap to your line, because then when you cut down, you'll be able to stop just at that line. Put the timber in your vise, and now we're going to cut down along here. We've cut out our waist piece now, and this is called the shoulder, and this is called the cheek. So we've cut those out. We're gonna repeat the process for our second piece. two pieces sawn out. We're going to lay them out uh, right and left. I can see that and we're going to put them together. Now it's a rough cut and we can clean these up but we have the very basics of a corner half lap. Now it can also be a lengthening half lap so we can put them together like that. Now, I'm using an inexpensive chisel here. I'm, I've chosen one as wide as possible and when we're starting out, we don't want to spend a whole lot of money on these. This came from a chisel set that's about uh, 30 pounds. Now, when you get into your hand tools and you want to spend more money, you could use a specialist plane on this, which is a router plane, and that'll get you a perfect finish on here. Well, almost perfect, as good as you're able to use it. And it, it's very nice. But when you're a complete beginner and you're starting out, this is affordable. And this is quite good because if you're going to get within about uh, with practice about a mil of where you should be, then that's a good uh, amount of allowance, really. So it's a pretty good one. And if you're within five mil, well, that's great. You just need a bit more practice and a bit more progress. So we're going to take our chisel and clean this up a little here. Throw the dust out of the way and we'll clean both of these up a small bit and take a look at them in a moment. Right in the corner here, after we've sawn, we often get a bit of the fibers sticking up in the way and we want to cut those out. So we're going to take our chisel here, hold it quite low uh, by the neck, 
thumb and finger around there by the neck and you get a good grip on that and we're going to score the timber across this way and then back this way and that will stop getting any breakout from here so we're going to score it across here score it across there and then we'll clean that out We're going to check our work as we go along and we'll take a combination square or a tri-square and we know that the top of that is square but if we want to check our cheek which is this bit put that down there and let's see what kind of gap we got in there that's pretty close if it's a bit high on any point just pencil mark it and take that off with a chisel the other one we want to check out is off our edge side we want to put our square on that and see our shoulder square that's quite good let's check the other one good down there happy with that Because we're using inexpensive tools, make use of everything that you've got. If you've got a bit of sandpaper, don't say we can't use a bit of sandpaper on the end of this. So when you're very close and you're getting your faces flush, then at that stage, get out the sandpaper and get it down on that last bit and you can clean out those pieces. And that's quite flush. Let's get a close up. Now that we've cut our two half laps, we can put them together and we've got a corner half lap. The areas that we should be looking and checking out are to see if it's square when we put it in. And that looks fairly square. The other one, well, let me get that back in there. This one isn't glued, but before you glue it, well, you'd clamp it and put it in place. So that's quite square on that one, 90 degree angle. The other area that we're gonna be looking at is how flush it is along here. I could still do with a little tidying up there. And on this side, when you run your hand on it, that feels quite smooth. But if this was a final piece and we were actually gonna be putting this somewhere, it would get a plane up afterwards and a sand, and it would take that out. And then these end bits, they would get planed off as well and that's the easiest way to remove them if you end up doing it exactly on the timber sometimes it's a bit too short it's always better to have a little bit more and be able to cut it off so there we have a corner half lap which is also a lengthening half lap and where is this typically used you get it a lot on wall plates on buildings on structures you get it um, on very simple basic boxes if you need to many places but as a beginner's joint this is an ideal place to start <laughs>